You know, but I think, you know, when, uh, the reason that Tim and I wrote this book, Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission, is because the, the, the biggest reason that we are in the mess we're in today is because the pastors, Christians, and churches of America have simply refused to be the salt of the earth and to stand up as a resistance to this kind of tyrannical uh, of ideas, philosophies, and now activities that are taking place. They've been brainwashed in the pulpits and in the seminaries of America, this erroneous, fallacious interpretation of Romans 13 that the government, because it's ordained of God, means that it has the right to do whatever it wants to do, and no one is, as a Christian should resist. This is the most foolhardy interpretation of a biblical passage that I could ever think of. The problem is it is pervasive throughout our seminaries, our Bible colleges, our pulpits, every denomination is teaching this. I would venture to say that over 90% of the American churches, pastors, seminaries, and colleges are putting forth this interpretation of Romans 13. And for those that don't know, all the World Council of Churches and before that National Council set up, what, 100 years ago by the Rockefellers publicly, all they had to do was go in and give grants and lobby and take control of, what, the 20 or so big denominations. They order them what to preach. To the point of, I can play a newscast saying it is of the Lord to go to FEMA camps, it is of the Lord to take shots, it is of the Lord to do what you're told, and, and go to the camp. I mean, that's a quote, I'm sure you've seen that newscast, where, where they actually admit this, and we got the documents, Pastor Butch Paw did years ago, and then I got more documents here on Genesis, and then people didn't believe the documents, and then later they came out and said, yeah, we've recruited over 100,000 preachers to spy on you and, and to tell you to go to a FEMA camp. I mean, that's right out of Red Dawn. Yeah, well, not only that, but, but we know that FEMA has these, as you already mentioned, these clergy response teams that's going around training pastors that in the event of a national emergency, quote-unquote, declared by the president, the pastors are going to be utilized by the government, namely FEMA, to encourage their congregants to turn over their firearms to the federal government. And I've, I've had pastors, I've talked to pastors that have attended these seminars. I, I've seen some of the... Some of the uh, uh, manuals that they have distributed. I've, I've heard the first-hand testimony from some of these pastors. No, we got, the, well, we got the manuals. They even go on the news. But here's the deal. People couldn't believe it when it wasn't public when we first got the documents. Then they even admitted it. And folks said, well, I guess turning my guns in is of the Lord. But think about that. All over the country, for at least eight years, secretly training preachers to, to tell their flock, hand your guns in, go to the camp. That proves they're preparing this, Pastor. I mean, that is such a huge revelation. Please, how please. they use Romans 13 and how they twist it, uh, Pastor Chuck Baldwin. Well, what they do is they teach that Romans 13 uh, would have every Christian to submit to civil government, regardless of the kind of uh, edicts that government may put forth. In other words, uh, if government is 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 wicked and evil, uh, requiring men to submit to evil and wickedness as a Christian, that we are to submit to that evil government because Romans 13 teaches us to do so. It, it is a totally passive uh, application, an erroneous application of this you know wonderful passage of Scripture that it actually does just the opposite. That's why Tim and I wrote the book. It's called Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. And we go into it verse by verse. We go into it in depth. We look back into the history of, of a Christian forebears. We talk about the Christian philosophers and theologians of, of years gone by. We compare what they had to say to what preachers are saying today. We go back into the Old Testament. We look at the Scripture from... Uh, from both the Old and New Testament standpoint, and we see the consistent teaching of Scripture is just the opposite of what this current uh, interpretation uh, that is being used uh, is. And as a result, this book, Romans 13, uh, is, is, in my estimation, a blockbuster, because there's nothing else like it in print that I know of today, uh, at least not recently. And we are trying to get the word out to Christians, to churches, to pastors, and showing, giving them the scriptural, historical foundation of the true meaning of Romans chapter 13. For folks that don't know, it was one of Hitler's favorite uh, verses to take out of context. And uh, for those that don't know what it says, why don't you state Romans 13 for listeners? 
Yeah, Romans chapter 13 uh, basically says that you know, the higher powers, that we are to submit to the higher powers uh, in verse 1. But the higher powers mentioned in verse 1 uh, are, are constituted to be uh, the highest power. And the fact of the matter is the higher power, which is the civil power, is not the authority of God. It is not the highest power. All power is subjective, Alex. All power is jurisdictional. Every single person in any position of authority or power has a jurisdiction related to that authority. He has no right to violate or transgress the parameters in the jurisdiction. It's like you have a right to defend yourself, and you have a right to defend yourself in your own home, but you don't have your right to go into somebody else's house when they attack you, uh, defend yourself. It's all common sense, uh, jurisdictional, and the system understands this. And also they say, well, do whatever government says. It's your king. Well, in America, we, the people, right, we created the government. So so we're going to, uh, I mean, but now our government is a bunch of foreign banks that paid off our politicians. So we've got to submit to Al Gore and George Soros. This new book you've got out, even if someone isn't a Christian out there and they wonder why the churches in America just support any type of illegal war, any type of torture, any type of corruption, any type of forced inoculations, it's because they become like state-run churches like in China or Soviet Russia. And so it's important to educate pastors uh, about what's going on. Now, continuing with, with, with uh, Romans 13 and what it really states and what it's been turned into. Right. Uh, thank you very much, Alex. And, and Romans chapter 13, we talked that we ended the right before the break uh, in verse 1 where it says, Let every soul be subject to the higher powers. There's no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God and so forth. And what they do is they take they translate those verses into meaning that we are to submit to government no matter how evil, no matter how wicked, no matter how unconstitutional, et cetera, et cetera. And what we've done, my, my son is a co constitutional attorney, as you know, and uh, he and I collaborated on this book. We call it Romans 13, The True Meaning of Submission. And we, we go into the depth of the Word of God in both Testaments. We look at the scriptures, uh, the myriad scriptures that deal with this. There, there's hundreds and hundreds of scriptures that deal with this subject, not just Romans chapter 13. That the passage does not stand alone. We know that the scripture is to be interpreted in the light of other scripture. And so we've got, we've delved into the various scriptures. We've delved into history. Well, the entire Bible the is the prophets and people being killed for not submitting to corrupt government. And Absolutely. the king says, bow down to you know, booble bub or whatever, and he says no, so get into the lion's den, or I'm going to crucify you upside down, or I'm going to sell you into slavery. The whole Bible is about resisting tyranny. Absolutely, and I make that statement in, in, in the course of my address. I, I, I preached a four-part series based on the book, and I made that, that very statement, that very observation, that if you look at biblical history, you go back to the Old Testament, even into the New, uh, perhaps a majority... Uh, can't say that equivocally, but perhaps a majority of the stories of, of the Bible deal with someone resisting civil authority. I think almost, uh, I'd say 80 percent. I mean, look at John the Baptist getting his head cut off. I mean, Absolutely. can you think of anybody? Uh, I mean, Moses didn't do what Pharaoh said. I mean, the whole thing's a sick joke. It's, yeah, a, it really it's a joke. The entire Bible is about, uh, about resisting tyranny. Exactly right. And I, again, that's why I say that this book is so needful. Uh, and as you noted, every tyrant in history has used Romans 13, especially if there's a Christian uh, people involved, to try and subjugate the folks into, into, their, into their wishes. Hitler did it. Uh, we, we know that this is a favorite uh, passage of Scripture from those who would like to, uh, you know, tyrann uh, tyrannize us and to uh, enslave us. Yeah, this book, Romans 13, uh, Alex, I, I just don't know of anything right now that's out there. That's why we put this together. And I, you know, in my frustration as a pastor for over 35 years in dealing with, with churches and preachers and Christian people and, and hearing this over and over and over again, that and the 501c3 uh, incorporation status, those two things have subjugated the church to, to Caesar more than any two things I can think of. And that's why this book is so necessary. Well, let's go over a few of the uh, accounts in the Bible of people uh, being evil and, and, and resisting murderers and tyrants. 
according to the modern preachers. And then let's go through actually through some of the passages because, I mean, there's just so many. You know, I, I, I can't even remember. You know, Who will rise up for me against the wicked one? On and on and on about if you see evil being done and you don't try to resist it, then the blood's on your hands. I mean, let's go through a bunch of those. Uh, verses, if you've got them there in front of you, Pastor, sure. on the other side. Then we'll jam in some calls as well and continue with calls throughout the end of the broadcast when the pastor leaves us at T-minus 25 minutes. Going back to uh, um, the, the, the pastor. Pastor, please, shotgun through Romans 13, what it really says versus the other uh, passages and stories in the Bible. Well, yeah, right, Alex. Thanks a lot. And, and uh, yeah, you, you mentioned right before the break, let, let's talk about some of the examples in the Bible of those who resisted unlawful authority. I, and let's think about Daniel, one of the great uh, stories of the Scripture. Uh, every Sunday school boy and girl hears about Daniel in the lion's den. Well, uh, you, you know, how did he get to the lion's den? He got there because his civil authority government put him there. Well, why did they put him there? Because he resisted what they told him to do. He said no. In that particular case, they said you can't pray for X amount of days. Uh, publicly and uh, he, you know, I mean, even privately, and he said, "No, I'm not going to do that. I'm, you know, I'll open my windows. I'm going to pray like I do every day." They threw him in the lion's den. Of course, God protected him and, and saved him from the lion's den. But that's not the point. The point really wasn't that God saved him from the lions. The point was he was willing to go into the lion's den in defiance of his civil authority. The same book you got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who was commanded to bow down and worship the image of the state. Uh, they said, we can't do that. We'll have no other gods before us, the very first commandment. We're not going to bow to the state. The state is not our god. So they threw him in the burning, fiery furnace. And again, we talk about in, in Sunday school that God delivered them from the burning, fiery furnace. But again, that's not the point. The point is they went into the burning, fiery furnace. Why did they go in? Because they defied government. They were not willing to submit their conscience to the authority of the state. And this was the old terror of government. We're going to throw you in with starving lions if you don't do what we say. We're going to throw you into a smelting pit if you don't do what we say. I mean, the same garbage today. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, even the, the, the book of Judges. I mean, people read the book of Judges, whether it's Gideon or, or Samson or, or, or Jephthah or whoever it is. Read the entire book of Judges. What do we find? We find the people of God being tyrannized, being uh, subject, subjugated by some oppressive regime, and God raising up a deliverer uh, called a judge. Sometimes they were just a, a, a common person that had no uh, you know, particular position or, or authority, but God put it on their heart to deliver their people from that tyranny that they were under. And so they rose up, God helped them, God gave them strength, and they delivered the people from this oppressive uh, regime, whatever it might happen to be. That's the entire book of Judges. Uh, you, you get to the New Testament, you come to Simon Peter, uh, when the... Uh, the, the civil government over him said, we command you not to speak and preach anymore in his name. And he said, sorry, you know, we must obey God rather than man. And they took the, the cat of nine tails on the back for that, uh, went to prison for that. But they said no. They defied civil authority. The entire Bible Same thing from with Paul. Cover cover. Uh, fast Same forward Paul. Uh, you know, past, uh, 70 years later. A uh, hundred years later, being burned at the stake in the arena, being thrown to lions because they wouldn't. Well, it's the entire Bible. And, and that shows you just how deceived or openly wicked most of these little devils are up there on the pulpits. I mean, these are little demons. Well, a lot of them have, have been, uh, they have been deceived. They, they, they've been taught it in, in seminary or Bible college. Uh, it's the accepted uh, doctrine to teach. They haven't thought it through. Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them are demons. They are, but some of them are just deceived. They just don't know any better. That's what they were taught, and they haven't studied it through for themselves. And that's why Tim and I wrote the book. Tim again is my constitutional attorney son, and we collaborated on this book. By the way, can I get my website so people can get a hold? Oh, absolutely. Of that? In fact, I was about to get to that. Go yeah, ahead. it's it's uh, you can't get it in bookstores. It's uh, chuckbaldwinlive dot com. That's chuckbaldwinlive all one word l i v e dot com, and it's very easy. You can see the links and you can click on it, order online, etc. But uh, that's why we wrote this book is because of this indoctrination that's going on out there. 
And that, in conjunction with the 501c3 uh, corporation status of churches, has completely neutered the pulpits. That's why they won't take a stand. And these people that are listening out there, and all denominations of people are, are listening right now, and you go to church on Sunday, and you come back, and you say to Alex on the phone, or you say to your friends, you know, why doesn't my preacher take a stand? Why won't he talk about this? Why doesn't he get involved in this? And this is why. This is why. The 501c3 tax-exempt status, by the way, our Liberty Fellowship here in, in Montana, is not a 501c3 uh, fellowship. By the way, it didn't exist until the 50s. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the freedom of the press, on and on and on. First Amendment. They said, oh, you can still be a church that's tax-exempt outside of law because we can't put a law on you. We have no jurisdiction, back to what you were talking about earlier. Or you can be a charitable organization. And the big denominations ordered all their churches to file under it. And now the charitable organization has no free speech when it doesn't get any clearer than the First Amendment. Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or the press or the people uh, to peaceably assemble. I mean, it just goes on and on. Read the First Amendment. It's all right there. And now I've had friends come to me from their Baptist churches, their Catholic churches, uh, their uh, you, know, you name it. I, I, Mormons have sent me the letters where uh, just across the board, uh, they are told, do not even talk about politics or your views, even at church or at any church function. I mean, they're even telling now their flocks don't have free speech. I mean, these are like Soviet cults. Yeah, the, the fear of losing their tax-exempt status is what's causing that. And Romans chapter 13, in the erroneous interpretation of that passage, is giving them the spiritual justification for it. That's, that's the double tandem that is uh, destroying America. If we could get the churches and the preachers to stand up for the biblical principles of liberty, the same kind of principles that Jonas Clark, uh, he was the pastor of the church at Lexington on April 19, 1775, when the British troops came marching through to do two things. They were going to arrest John Adams, uh, excuse me, Sam Adams and John Hancock, and they were going to, to seize the cache of firearms that was stored at Concord. And when they got to Lexington, it was Pastor Jonas Clark and the congregants, the male congregants of his church, that were the Minutemen that fired the shot, heard round the world, and the war for independence began in the United States. And, it was, it, and that was the kind of spirit that the black regiment preachers all uh, personified back at that time. They all understood this. I mean, if we had this erroneous, fallacious interpretation of Romans 13 in the colonies, like we have today in America, we would still be a crown colony of Great Britain. Well, that's why the social engineers 100 years ago first thing targeted the takeover of the churches and the teaching of Romans 13. I mean, they knew they had to get rid of real Christianity in this country, and they've replaced it with all these gold little shiny uh, glitter bug uh, people in you know fancy outfits with pink wigs on acting like clowns on purpose i mean that is all de by design ladies and gentlemen it was the christians that kicked king george back to england we'll be right back with chuck baldwin your calls that's a good question for you chuck i'm sure you've seen harry reed call the tea partiers terrorist uh, the new york times says that anybody who does, wants to get rid of the federal reserve is quote hezbollah they're rebranding and saying we're not worried about Al Qaeda now. And I told folks this was coming. It's it's particularly white males and Christians, uh, and we've got all these White House memos about how great a terror attack would be uh, to help them. We have Joe Biden saying the Tea Party are terrorist. Uh, it, they're really trial ballooning, coming after people that understand that they are the criminals. Yeah, well, I got a little taste of that in 2008, Alex. Whenever the Mayak report came out in the state of Missouri. And identified myself and Ron Paul and Bob Barr by name, and of course you were you were on top of all that. We we you talked you broke the story on that one, and uh, that thing became a, a major debacle, uh, an embarrassment for the law enforcement officials in the state of Missouri that later rescinded the report and dismissed the man that initiated it. But the damage was done, and ever since then. That has been continuing. The Department of Homeland Security 
through their fusion centers, continues to put out this kind of uh, disinformation. Well, I was about to say, my act was just a regurgitated ADL federal report. That's exactly right, SPLC. And they continue. Uh, these reports continue. I, I promise you, everywhere you go to speak, everywhere I go to speak, uh, and there is a report that appears in the computers of the local and county law enforcement officers alerting them to the fact that we are there identifying us as extremists, et cetera. And I'm, I'm not just saying that by hearsay. I actually saw a police computer report one time when I invited Dr. Greg Dixon to come and speak to my church, a great man of God, the former pastor of Indianapolis Baptist Temple in Indianapolis, Indiana, that was seized by the IRS, the only church in America to, to do so. And uh, whenever he came to speak, uh, Deputy Sheriff let me see the uh, computer in his car, alerting him to Dr. Dixon's presence in my church. Now, that came from DHS through the Fusion Center into the local and county law enforcement. Oh, yeah, that's who they're watching when they get the Christmas Day underwear bomber. The government admits they got him on the plane, all staged. Amaral Lockie hanging out secretly at the Pentagon, Fox News. But I got sent a secret report from the Army that at my events for In the Fed and Ron Paul's, they have Army there. And it says, don't let them know your army. They'll try to kill you. I mean, they're telling the military we, that if you come to an in the Fed rally and they, we find out they're military, we're going to kill them, Pastor, like we're like we're vampires or something. And yeah, there's, that's a, what there's a link right there on the front page. You see it mm -hmm. advertised. Just click that, get it online, credit cards, uh, et cetera, and able to pick this up. And it's, uh, you know, it's just under 200 pages, uh, it's chucked full of, Scripture references from both Testaments. We have theologians, historians, and Christians from history and their comments uh, on what they said about this subject. And I, I challenge anyone to read this book and then not be convinced that we have a sacred obligation to resist uh, evil authority. And you know, by the Benjamin way, Franklin, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, Benjamin Franklin said, rebellion to tyrants is obedience to God. And he was exactly right. That is a scriptural truism, that it is an obligation of Christian people to resist evil government. But, but Pastor, as you know, this is a chicken or egg situation. If you've really got God in your heart, you're not going to be able to control yourself. You're going to be drawn towards confronting bullies and scum. Uh, and I think that's the issue. So I think the book should be gotten out to pastors because maybe they're ignorant and it will certainly wake some up. But also, it's a test. If your pastor reads it and then argues with you about it, because I've read the Bible, I've studied history, this is common sense, it's a no-brainer. But if they read this very well-written, well-researched historical document, and they still don't listen, then you need to find a better church. And, and, and I think your book should be really a litmus test uh, for churches. What do you say to that, uh, Pastor Baldwin? Oh, wow, I think... I think Thank you, Alex. I think that's true. I, don't, I couldn't tell you how many people have, have read the book and have, have called us back or written us and said, you know what, this, what, this confirmed everything that I knew in my heart was true, but I didn't know where to find it in the Bible. I, I didn't know where to, to, to see it in print, but now I see it, and, you know, and, and they have done that very thing. I, now I'm looking for a church that will preach the truth relative to, to this vitally important subject. And I know people all over America that are doing that, so I, I think that is exactly... If we don't start voting with our feet, we Christians, if we don't start voting with our feet and getting out of these churches that are bringing us into bondage, spiritually, politically, ethically, in every other way, and start finding true men of God out there, even if the church is a small little church with only 30 or 40 people in it, so what? Be in a church where the truth is being preached, and God will bless your family, and more, and more than that, God will bless our nation. I could not agree more. Yeah, we got to do it. Uh, we've turned away from the basic principles, and now look what we're getting. The Constitution Bill of Rights goes out the door. Corruption and absolute poverty comes in. I mean, I thought it's real simple. We got to get the tyranny out of here, but we got to replace Pastor, it. I want to something. thank you for coming on, and I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Thank you, Alex, and thanks for letting me be on the show. Keep up the great work. Are you kidding? Thanks for writing that book. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we, we want to get it out, and we want people to, to get the message, and that we really believe that the, the Christian and the churches uh, is where the, the real power is in this country. Uh, it's always been that way. We, the people, are the 
are the government and we are the power in this country. And if you can get the pastors and the Christians to understand their obligation and their duties under God, and I think of that scripture verse where Jesus said, if the salt has lost its savor, it's henceforth good for nothing but to be trodden under the foot of men and cast out. And that's exactly what's happened. The church has lost its saltiness, and it's being cast out and trodden under the foot of tyranny. And Romans 13 and the misinterpretation of it is one of the biggest reasons why this book is a major, major breakthrough, I think, in helping people to have the information scripturally, historically, at their fingertips to know how to, how to deal with that. And again, if they'll go to ChuckBaldwinLive.com, all one word, ChuckBaldwinLive.com, they can order that book. Okay, we look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Take care. Thank you, Alex. All right, there he goes. Yeah, it, it is important to get those type of materials out to people. Um, and, and that's why this radio show exists, is a platform for information to get it out to people.